This is Wretched Radio with Todd Freeman. As long as we're talking about old dead guys. Caesar Hadrian um, became Caesar of Rome, I believe, in around 117. Um, and, and he was a religious man, not a Christian, a religious man. In fact, he built the Temple of Venus. So, so here, religious man, and, and, and he was so weirded out by this small but very rapidly growing cult called the Way, we call it Christianity, that he sent a, a man to get to the bottom of what made us as the people of God distinct. So you've got a Caesar of Rome who built a temple to Venus who starts to get anxious about Christianity's growing global influence, so he sends a spy in to check us out. Cool. His name was, uh, I'm going to just try this, just try to trust me. Um, Aristides, Yep. I think. Mm -hmm. And in a letter back to Caesar, here's what he wrote. They love one another, and he who has gives to him who has not without boasting. And when they see a stranger, they take him into their homes and rejoice over him as a very brother. And if there is among them any that are poor and needy, and if they have no spare food, they fast two or three days in order to supply to the needy their lack of food. Listen to this. Such O oh, king, is their manner of life, and verily, this is a new people, and there is something divine in the midst of them. That isn't a fairy tale. That happened. The people of God, marked by generosity, motivated by the grace and mercy of God with the metric being a heart that is cheerful in the Lord with the method of empowering churches to do the work of raising up individuals for ministry while sacrificially giving, secretly giving, all the while with a cheerful disposition rejoicing in the moving of the gospel to the ends of the earth. Those were very foolish people. They should have just given 10%. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That was a cheap shot and completely uh, unnecessary that. Uh, this yeah. is Wretched Radio. That was Matt Chandler talking about an historical, a little peek into the window of early Christianity from a spy. He was actually a Greek philosopher in the second century. Aristides wrote an apology concerning what he had observed. And what he observed was radical. And so we get a little, a little peek into the ancestry of our Christian forefathers and for mothers. Before I get to more observations from this Aristides, did you notice what Matt Chandler snuck in? Did you hear something that caused you to go, oh, I, I wouldn't have chosen that pronoun exactly. When he was describing the people of the way, he said something like, and this is what Aristides observed about us, not them, about us. And he did it twice. And while I recognize it's subtle and it's not going to change the current tide of Western civilization, it is a small way that we can remind our kids, this is your heritage. This is your ancestry. Why two per, while 2% 2 of our evangelical kids are swimming the Tiber and becoming Roman Catholic, which is a big number considering the amount of evangelicals in America. That's a lot of kids we're losing. And I think one of the reasons is because they don't understand they have a heritage. They look to Rome. They look to Eastern Orthodoxy because they want to be connected to an apostolic tradition. You are connected to an apostolic tradition. But you're not connected through a system. You're not connected through a church. You're not connected through tradition. You're connected through, those, through Jesus to those people. They believe what you believe. That's your connection. Not by going to Rome or by going to Eastern Orthodoxy. These are your ancestors. These are your peeps. You know, to use the vernacular of the, 
of the kids exactly. these days. These are your homies, homie. You're related to these people. I think we need to be doing more of that. And I think Matt Chandler probably had that in view uh, when he described us that way. What else did Aristides say? Number one, this is from Eric Geiger, assembled these. Their trust in Christ impacts how they live. Quote, and I'm translating this from Greek for you because Mm -hmm. I can. They know and trust it. They know and trust in God. From him they receive those commandments which they have engraved on their minds and which they observe in the hope and expectation of the world to come. Isn't that interesting where their sights were set? Not unearthly things. For this reason, they do not commit adultery or immorality. They do not bear false witness or embezzle, nor do they covet what is not theirs. Certainly not perfect, but they were storing up treasures in heaven. Do you remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5 to the Corinthians when he was basically defending his apostleship? I... I, when you read most older commentaries, I think, that they, and I understand why they, they aim it in this direction, but I think that Paul is, is actually describing something a little different. You've heard the verse, because of the terror of the Lord, knowing the terror of the Lord, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. Most commentaries say, oh, it's because we know that those people are going to hell and it's really horrible. We persuade men. I don't think that's what the context is is suggesting. Remember, Paul is trying to defend his apostleship, and he's trying to defend his motives for coming to them, preaching the gospel to them. It wasn't because I was trying to get rich or I was trying to become exalted among you. I understand the judgment that I'm going to be receiving. I think it was a pointing toward the judgment of Christians, not for their sins, but for their works. Knowing that... That is what motivates me to persuade men rightly. It is my motive. It is my heart. It is my recognizing I am going to be rewarded for what I do on this planet. And I want to make sure that I am doing it rightly. And by the way, he talks about those motivations in 2 Corinthians 3 and 4. When he's talking about what he describes the Bema Seat Judgment, I don't know if it's a separate seat or it's the Great White Throne Judgment where we where where you'll be judged for your works, the pagans will be judged for their sins, there'll be a separating of goats and sheep. It, regardless, we're going to be judged for our works. And Paul was motivated to preach with the correct motivation, which is what 2 Corinthians 4 says is one of the criteria for judgment. What is our motivation? Because he was interested in those rewards. And the early Christian church was. And we should be too. Furthermore, it curbs our behavior. I just read a grace gem. Uh, Here it is right here from Edward Griffin. This will hold you back from a thousand evils. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Let the fear of the Lord be before your eyes. This will hold you back from a thousand evils to feel that you're in the presence of your maker. That an omniscient eye is upon you is the best preservative against sin. It would seem the early church got that. Number two observation from Aristides. Their unity transcends what they have in common. As for their bondmen and bondwomen and their children, if there are any, they persuade them to become Christians. And when they have done so, they call them brethren without distinction. That's lovely. What's your past? You're in Christ? Brother. You used to do what? You're in Christ? Sister. Number three, they are a joyful people, observed Aristides. He watched as they, quote, go their way in all humility and cheerfulness. Falsehood is not found among them. Why did Hadrian want to know about these people? Because if this description is true and we have no reason to doubt it, this is exactly what Peter was describing and prescribing in 1 Peter 3. During persecution, during times of trouble, be a holy people, be a submissive people. How do we respond to the shooting in Washington? What can we do? It's insane out there. What do we do? Be holy, be submissive. Why? 
so that people ask about the hope that lies within you. That's basically what Adrian was doing via a spy. They were seeing the behavior, and it was catching on, and they're wondering, what's up with those people? That is how we're to be living in culture. Number four, they love one another in action, not just words, as we heard from Matt Chandler. They gave sacrificially, helping one another, living together, wanting the gospel to be spread, that the flames of faith would be fanned throughout the world. They were willing to sacrifice from the heart for that end. Here's my question for you. Let's just say Donald Trump sent a spy to your church to check out your people. What exactly would a modern-day Aristides see in your church? That kind of gets to the quick, doesn't it? Until tomorrow, go serve your king. Thanks for listening to the Wretched Segment Du Jour. If you'd like more Wretched, you can listen to the most current stream for free at wretched.tv slash listen, or you can become a club member and listen to our entire archive. Wretched, reaching the lost, equipping the saints, and strengthening the local church.